Hey everybody, Ben from X Geeks, and we're back with What Remains of Edith Finch. I can't imagine my mom ever writing poetry, and yet... So, we've just had Gregory's story, which was in the bathtub, which was really fun and surreal and, like, amazing. But at the end of it, it was a baby dying, so, um... Whew, yeah. So I guess now it's Gus, and this will be another child. Oh, okay, here we go. A poem for Gus, who always said the wedding was a bad idea. Our father never hit us kids, at least not very hard, before the day my brother said with teenage disregard that he'd be dead before he'd see a wedding in our yard. My father made him come, of course, but Gus stood far apart, just flew his kite and bottled up the storm inside his heart. This is really cool. I tried to talk him out of it, but though he'd never met her, we don't need a stepmom, were the words that I, I now pronounce you husband and wife. You may kiss the bride. Okay, so we've got no more text. Oops. Can we reel it in? Nope. Oh wow, we can go all the way around. Okay, did not realise that. Oh, cause there's more of the... <sighs> when the time for photos came, Dad ordered him to come, come here. here. But Gus declined, and as a sign held up his middle finger. <laughs> <laughs> the wind picked up, and panic geese appeared and quickly went. But all the humans did that day was go inside the tent. Whoa. The rain came down in buckets then, but no one seemed afraid that nature might destroy the tent our dad had crudely made. Oh, this is this is insane. This is like actually insane. The thunder sounded much too close and full of angry power. But all my father said to this was, make the music louder. I wish that I could truly say I thought about you on that day. Out there on the beach alone. Just you, the wind, the sea, and foam. But I didn't. Until we found you. Okay. She never talked about him, but Mom told me once if I was a boy, they were going to name me Gus. Wow, funny tree's really coming coming along now. Guess can we go this way? Just got the climbing wall. My mom moved up to the loft after her brothers died. So we're going to our mom's room At now? At the time it was as far away as she could get. <gasps> so this was her room. Looking down on her brothers. Well, she's looking down at some teenage boys. Uh, good luck with that. She spent a summer building houses in Calcutta, where she met my dad, 
Sanjay. Oh, I'm gonna say we saw that name outside, and obviously it wasn't a Finch. So there, it looks like my cousin. That's totally scary. Fly to India, Dawn Finch. Got the Bible. Religion was another thing my mom never talked about, but I think it helped her a lot after her dad died. I say the amount of death in the family, you'd probably turn to religion. My mom moved to India a week after graduation and got a job teaching English. Lewis was born a year later. When my dad died, I don't think mom knew where else to go. I'm sure Edie was happy to have her back. Got a little herb the house garden. had to get a little bigger, but Edie was used to that. And for a while, things were good. Almost normal. Edith Lewis but it didn't last. The beginning of the end was Milton's tenth birthday, when Edie gave him a castle. After Milton disappeared, the only thing he left behind was a room full of paintings. Wow. Talented kid. Oh, no way. Milton Finch in The Magic Paintbrush. Oh, it's a flip book. I feel like I'm in an aha video. <laughs> That's nice. I was four when Milton disappeared. Mom spent months searching for my brother. Then she sealed the doors. Whatever Milton had found in the house, Mom didn't want it getting out. Guess we go up. Oh, I've walked all the way around here, I can't even get out. Mom definitely blamed Edie, but I think Lewis blamed himself. After he graduated, he just spent more and more time in his room until Mom got him a job at the cannery. Nope, guess we're not going that way. Crazy. Like, could you imagine bit of uh, No. Won't be able to do that. Lewis's room smelled very, very familiar. That part of him lived on. Ah, I see. <laughs> Lewis and I spent a lot of time playing games together, but he was surprisingly bad at them. He died a lot.
Dear Mrs. Finch, as Lewis's psychiatrist, I can understand your desire for an explanation. As I see it, the trouble began in January, shortly after we convinced your son to seek treatment for substance abuse. Newly sober, I believe Lewis first noticed the monotony of his daily life. Whoa. He kept working at the cannery. But he withdrew part of Oh, himself. this is the guy who had like all the tuna cans and stuff. In our sessions I saw the same behaviour. His mind began to Oop. I can't grab it. Wonder. Oh, I'm moving that. I asked him to describe it. Oh, I'm doing like he said he started small. Two things at once. Uh <laughs> imagining a labyrinth. This is uh interesting. Feel his way about. So I'm using new. my mouse to do the fish and then arrow keys to and toads. Do the um and things that have not names. He knew it was all in his head. This is difficult. But he took it very seriously. I had hoped he'd find himself. But he found something more. I worried about him then. Daydreaming at the cannery. I spoke with his boss. But he said Lewis had become a model employee. Methodical, tireless, focused. Like a whole new Lewis. So I let him go on. I even encouraged him. It seemed very promising at first. He told me he'd made a new friend. Come on, doggy, follow me. On the edge of a city he named Lewis Hope. He built the city up slowly, brick by brick. Then he made musicians. And songs for them to play. This is incredible. He talked about starting a band. And he was always humming something. Every day his imagination grew stronger. He no longer spoke at the cannery. But his chopping was as reliable as ever. Then one day it struck him that all the cheering crowds, even the stones under his feet, were all in his imagination so he could do whatever he wished. He held an election for mayor. And he won. <laughs> they begged him to stay, but his mind was already wandering. It became a game for him. He'd conquer a city, then immediately push on. New Lewisville. St. Louis. <laughs> he started if, drifting away from our reality. Don't know if I'll get penalised for hitting anything. No, okay, so we're all right there. 
Minneapolis. <laughs> Until one day he forgot to go home from the cannery. Even as his mother pleaded with him, part of Lewis kept sailing on. In Lewisburg, he heard rumors of a a beautiful prince. Beautiful prince. The prince was on his own quest for radiant rainbows, always. Radiant rainbows. Oh yeah, just. He followed the sound of his... Electric sitar. Electric sitar. No, I missed one note there. His chase led him to a golden palace east of the sun and west of the moon. Even then, his logic remained sound. Oh, it's completely gone now. He knew the world was all in his imagination. But he was so proud of having created it. In his own eyes, he'd become something greater than a king. For someone who'd never known success in the real world, I think it was overwhelming. And then it struck him that the real Lewis was not the one chopping salmon, but the one climbing the steps of a golden palace. My imagination is as real as my body, he told me. It was hard to argue with him. Looker. He began to forget the world we know. I think it pained him to remember Lewis, the cannery worker. Oh wow, look, we're wearing our stuff. So that's he us. This is our man, character. The royal contempt. I still thought I could save him. Even after he said he was being crowned king over all the lands of wonder. The palace would be packed with his companions. Including the wise Calico who'd insisted on advising him. Molly. His prince waited, holding his crown. 
I'm glad that you could choose between a prince or a princess. That's pretty cool. There was only one thing left to do. I think having that option is a pretty good move for a game. Bend down his head. Half not looks like a guillotine. <laughs> Rest, I think you know. Mrs. Finch, your son was a kind man who will be missed by all of us who knew him. My brother was really cool. I wish you could have met him. So I'll get, I mean, this would be a pretty sweet gaming setup, do you know what I mean? Like, imagine playing like games here. I mean, that's sweetest uh, gaming rig in the world, I think. Um. Okay, makes it. On the way back from Lewis's funeral, my mom told me to start packing. She waited until the day before we left to tell Edie. I'm not sure if she wanted to make it easier or harder. I wish we'd stayed. But I understand why we left. <laughs> My mom ended up leaving everything behind. So, a uh, dad. <laughs> what happened that night had been coming for a long time. Maybe it should have come sooner. This us? But it had to end one way or another. Is this our bedroom? All that's left now is to tell you about that last night. Got all the figures. I wonder if our brother made this. There's a squid thing. Space. Right, it's all here. day, Edie just watched us pack and didn't say a word. Until supper, when she raised her glass and said, To our final night together, and all our final nights apart. Grandma, you know what I said about alcohol. Some of your medications are very Edith, specific- I left a present for you in the hallway. Why don't you go open it? The grown-ups have to argue now. I'm sorry, you're right. We're all leaving tomorrow. Let's just enjoy our last... I'm not leaving. Edith, you're excused. Oh, that's us. The power had been shut off that morning, but Edie always had plenty of candles. When my mom sailed the library, I don't think she knew about the other entrance. Or that Edie had a key to it. you're afraid of isn't going to end when you leave the house. Edith has a right to know these stories. My children are dead because of your stories. I think it's best if Edith and I leave tonight. We'll have the nursing home send a van for you in the morning. Okay. Dear Edith, 
There's so many stories I wish I could tell you, but there's only time for one. This is about what happened on the night you were born. That night, the tide went way, way out. It was the first and last time I ever saw the old house aground. There'd been an earthquake out in the middle of the ocean. They called it the lowest tide in a thousand years. God, it smelled awful. You know, I've seen that house every day of my life. But I never thought I'd go back to it. When the fog rolled in, I lost my way. No, if we keep walking straight, we should be fine. I got turned around. Until the game throws a spanner in the works. Just keep heading forwards. For a while, I wandered. I started seeing things. Things I'd forgotten had ever existed. But when I saw them, they felt like old friends. That night, a lot of things came back to me. Or maybe I came back to them. Things I can't explain, but that I need you to try and- Edith, what are you doing in here? It's mine. Edith. Mom, you're gonna rip it, let go! I kicked and screamed, but... Mom dragged me to the car. I never saw Great Grandma Edie again. Oh, man. The next morning, the van came to pick her up, but she was already gone. After that, we moved around a lot. <laughs> Still do this in the car. <laughs> we both tried to make the best of it. A few years went by. My mom didn't like to talk about it. But she started getting sick a lot. <coughs> the rest happened pretty quickly. She got better for a while. And then she didn't. And then I was alone. The last inch left alive. Until I found out about you. I'm still not sure what to tell you about all this. If we lived forever, maybe we'd have time to understand things. But as it is, I think the best we can do is try to open our eyes. And appreciate how strange and brief all of this is. This one was supposed to be for you. But now I hope you'll never see it. I just want to meet you. I don't like where we're heading right myself. now. I, I know it's very emotional and very... <sighs> Things didn't work out that way. Which means we died? This is where your story begins. 
I'm sorry I won't be there to see it. It's a lot to ask, but I don't want you to be sad that I'm gone. I want you to be amazed that any of us ever had a chance to be here at all. Good luck. Oh, we're the kid. Oh. <laughs> no way. Oh, that is a twist. And does that finish the curse off, or...? Um, this has probably been one of my greatest ever gaming experiences. Like, emotionally, this has just been an incredible journey that, you know, I've been on, and if you're watching this, you've been on too. Like, this game was so, so imaginative. And there was just so many different elements to the game. It was just... I, I, I'm actually speechless. Like, that ending... Like... Mind-blowing. This is like... This has been such an amazing game to play. I've, like... Oh, <laughs> I'm genuinely speechless. Like, this has probably been the, one of the best games I've ever played. Easily. Um... I can't make a definitive list in, you know, here and you know, here and now, but top ten definitely, probably top five in terms of you know how I get an emotional response from a game. This is probably one of the best, because this has just been sensational. Didn't know I was getting into it, it was just every thing was different. Like every element to the game was a different little thing, and it just made it such a unique gaming experience that I don't think I've ever played a game like this. I mean, this was absolutely sublime, and even the credits are like are just—it's so fitting with the game itself. And I just think all these people involved in this game are just—just just thank you. You know, this—this this is just—I'm oh, gushing over this game. I really am. And it had some really dark moments when you think about, like there, like the the thing with the bath, and how many child deaths we had in this game. But it was still. Like done in such like a beautiful way that was just like so, so well executed. Like I, I'm done to speak because I just think this has been an absolutely outstanding game to play, and I want to know what you think about it. You know, tell me what you think uh, about the game. Please leave all your thoughts in the comments. Um, <sighs> wow. Just like I'm still. Like totally speechless. <laughs> like this has just been absolutely incredible. Um and you know, I'm gonna keep talking until the credits credits finish. Uh you can, you yeah, know, skip the video if you want to already, that's not a problem, but I like even the voice acting, like the voice acting was so good. Like throughout. Like it was just so good. Um and like I said, I've recently played um Firewatch, and that was easy one of the, you know, one of my favourite games I've ever played because I love the story. Yeah, okay, it was short, but the story and the characters and that was so good. But this, oh, this has taken it to another level completely. Um, I'm just speechless. Like this has been, you know, I'm should kind of really put insert this at the start, but. Um, if you've, you know, if, before you watch this, go play this game for yourself, you know. <laughs> I love the memory of Lewis Finch. The Edith Finch team. The end. Brilliant. Replay story option. Oh, so you can replay story. Now that's cool. Okay, that's really good. Um, 
yeah, I think I've wished about this game long enough now. <laughs> um, so please remember to like and subscribe. And please, I want to know what you think. I really want to know what you think. So please, you know, get those uh, thoughts in the comments. And please, you know, share this video with someone you think will, you know, really enjoy watching it. Because I really enjoy playing with it. And yeah, this has just been one of the best gaming experiences of my entire life. And <laughs> where'd you go from here? Well, you'll have to find out and see what's next on our YouTube channel. Uh, remember, you can also check out the website xgeeks.co.uk and then you've got youtube.com forward slash xgeekstv. We're also on Twitter at xgeeks and we're also on Facebook xgeeksuk. Uh, so once again, I've been Ben. Thank you very much uh, for supporting me throughout this playthrough. You can follow me on Twitter at IamZavagno. And until the next time, we'll see you later.